You ready for the word of the Lord? I said, who's ready for the word of the Lord? All right, so I'm gonna ask one more again. Put me in the monitor, Stacy. Who's ready for the word of the Lord? We're standing for the reading of the word. Rashad, we're standing. So is your little friend. I always be messing with the worship team. You ain't gonna sing and then sit down. Y'all ain't no stars. You're gonna get up. That's what you're gonna do. Be like Mike. He's always prepared. Filled with the spirit and the mighty burning fire. Look, I like to have fun in church. Uh, somebody from Washington, D.C. is in the building. We had a guest from D.C. here. We had some other people from other places. Let me tell you something. I don't know what be going on in this back corner, but they started 4th of July early. I went back there to shake hands. Full on, bag, open of sour cream and onion Lay's potato chips. I didn't get none. She didn't get me none. I don't even care that you're eating. You're just going to, I mean, she opened it while I was standing there and looked at me. Good morning, Pastor. One of the babies here had a full Dr. Pepper, just whole beverage, just <laughs> carbonated beverage. As long as I don't see no little silver flask come out of your purse. <laughs> if you need a little taste before the word, hurry up. Let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> like, I know that's right. <laughs> he is worthy. We're going to John chapter 4 today. Let's get in this word. Let's get in it quick so we can get you guys off into your Independence Day uh, festivities. Is there anybody that's going to be doing any barbecuing? Somebody said, I'm going to be eating it. Them the people that you ain't, I don't, I'm not inviting you to the house. Because you're the one that be bringing that celery and ranch dressing from Publix. But don't nobody eat that. Bring something we're going to eat. Baked beans with hamburger meat. If your baked beans don't have hamburger meat, don't even call me. Don't invite me. I'm not coming. Put some brown sugar in there. I'm just trying to help your barbecue. Did you say some pineapples? No. No, ma'am. Come to the altar and get delivered. Don't nobody want no pineapple at no. <laughs> Ooh, these baked beans and pineapples. Show is what. <laughs> Somebody said bacon. Yeah, because I need y'all to. No, 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 no. Let me tell you about Pastor Aventer because. No, 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 we know about that part. But she's been trying to do healthier stuff, so she's like, let's get some turkey bacon in the green beans. I said, let me tell you something. You want to stay happily married? Put real, real bacon in them green beans or in the greens. My nutritionist is watching. Turkey bacon is exactly what we need. Matter of fact, let's have vegan... Fourth of July. <laughs> no, I'm playing. That is not God. He did not call for that. John chapter 4. We're at the 27th verse. We're at the 27th verse. I'm reading from the New King James Version. This is the portion of Scripture called the whitened harvest. The whitened harvest. And at this point, Jesus' disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Now, to give you some backstory, this is John chapter 4 where Jesus is speaking to the woman at the well, a Samaritan woman. Everybody say a Samaritan. So this is the fallout from that conversation. All right? So they marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? What they were saying here with asking those two questions, they knew enough about his character and integrity to know that they didn't have to question his motive while he was talking to her real quiet. The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, come see a man who told me all the things I ever did. Could this be the Christ? 
Then they went out of the city and they came to Jesus. In the meantime, his disciples urged him saying, Rabbi, eat. Look at somebody say, you hungry? Answer them. Ask them what you got a taste for. Answer them. What you got a taste for online? Keep talking. Put it in the chat for you. What you want? Some oxtails? Some rice? My cousin Angie made some oxtails. Didn't give me a plate, but I'm cool. It's very important that you know what you're hungry for. And it's very important that you know who prepared it. Because you can't eat everybody's cooking. That's why you got to watch the devil, because he will cook what you want. But it's not going to go down the same as if you let Jesus do it in his timing and his way. Jesus said to them, my food, watch this, my food, my sustenance is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Somebody say finish the work. Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. Big exclamation. This is Jesus saying things are speeding up. I, got, I need a prophetic congregation to wake up because I need you to run with me today. I need you to run with me. Jesus said, you think it's four months from now. It's this week. You talking about by fall, God's going to, no, no, by Tuesday. You know, you know God works on holidays. Jesus said, you're saying four months is the harvest. You got time. Jesus said, look at the field. It's already ready. It's whitened for harvest. I need somebody that's ready to work. And I am going to give my power and my favor to those who understand the moment that we're in. You don't have four months. God's calling you to move now. Somebody say now. Yeah, you're like, well, Lord, what's that? I'll just, I'm going to just, trust. he said, uh-uh. That ain't trust you trying to use church words. You scared. It's time to move. All right. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for the harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. What is Holy Spirit saying? Don't tell me how tired you are. There are generations of mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers that were praying, that went through trial and tribulation for us to even be in this moment right here, right now. And God is saying they prayed and sowed and labored and fasted and interceded and spoke in tongues and prayed in the Spirit. And now we come in here and God is saying, don't get lazy because you're literally living off the prayers of other people who have already gone on to glory. I sent you to reap for that which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. That means it's a team effort. So we're going to stay in the purpose of the power. This is part five. Yeah, and this is part five, chapter two of Spirit-Led, Spirit-Fed. Let me pray for you, and then let's get into this word. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to speak to your people. I pray that they would be enlightened by your spirit, empowered by your spirit, and launched into purpose by your spirit. But do not let them leave without power, discernment, and protection. Cover this house. I bind every devil. And then I serve notice to the principality over Greenville and the spiritual hosts of wickedness that hover over this land thinking that you can stop anything that God wants to do here. Father, send Michael the archangel to do war on our behalf. Break up this atmosphere in the next 20 minutes. Turn it! By the sheer force of your power, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen, and amen. And everybody who loved him like me gave him a praise as you took your seat. Woo! 
All right, I'm going to move quick, so I need you to sit up, get this word, get your notepad ready. Let's not text, but let's be prepared. Amen? Number one, let's do a little bit of remedial coursework, just some refresher. Number one, the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus was raised from the dead, right? Amen. Um, and then he said, listen, y'all stay here till you get power because you're going to need power to do the thing that I have commanded you or mandated you to do. And so they were all in one place on one accord and suddenly... There was a sound as of a mighty rushing wind, and then uh, cloven tongues as of fire fell upon each of them, and then those who were surrounded, proselytes from all these different countries, were in this area hearing these people worship God in their own native language. And so the idea in Acts chapter 2, the reality is that speaking in tongues according to God this scripture in Acts was glossa, where we get the word glossary. Glossa means language. So they weren't speaking in a prayer language that you read about in 1 Corinthians later. We are talking about the effectual movement of the Holy Spirit in the introduction of the Holy Spirit into the earth outside of the body of Jesus. This is why Jesus said, it's better that I go because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will be confined to me. But once I die, all those who believe in me will have the same spirit that I have in order to do the will of the Father in the earth. So each one of us is a version of Christ in the earth and that is not heresy because scripture says as he is, so are we in this world. And so until you see yourself with the same power as Jesus, you don't see yourself clearly. I'm already preaching better. And so that being said, we are now in week five, the purpose of the power. The purpose of the power is not to make yourself feel better or look down on other people because you have some spiritual uh, awareness or awakening that others don't. The Holy Spirit would never lead you to be prideful or arrogant. The Holy Spirit is not going to be vindictive. The Holy Spirit doesn't gossip. You say that you're filled with the Holy Spirit because you speak in tongues, but you speaking in tongues belies the fruit. Because you can speak in a tongue, but talk to me, tell me, uh, show me the fruit. Because we've all been around people who speak in a tongue and will cuss you out in English. Speak in a tongue and sleep with anything moving. And so the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to make you holy. What is holy? Holy does not mean I'm better than you, I'm perfect. It means I've been sanctified or separated by God for a specific purpose. And so God is trying, not trying, God wants those of us who have been called to speak truth in moments of great church entertainment to remind you that Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Father is God. It is important for us to know this and to understand this because there are so many heretical teachings in the church right now, and it is more entertainment driven than biblically based. And so I want to wake up this church and I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to lean in for the next 15, 20 minutes and get this word. Tell somebody, lean in. Online, put it in the chat feed. Lean in. Tell all your friends to text your friends. Tell them, get on the, get on the, on the, on the uh, feed right now. So Jesus in John chapter 4 is uh, speaking with a Samaritan woman. Now, I grew up in Cincinnati, and I was actually there yesterday eulogizing a man who was like a grandfather to me, uh, and it's a sacred thing when God allows you to uh, salute and give honor to the people that help to, to make you who you are, because nobody gets wherever they got by themselves. God's open. I'm, I'm a door opener. I don't shut doors for people. I open doors. People have tried to shut doors for me, but be, I'm glad that they couldn't stop anything God wanted to do because I'm a Revelation 3 and 8 kind of guy. I've set before you an open door that no man can shut. But one of the things that we know about 
uh, Samaritans and Jews is that they did not get along. Jews and Samaritans did not really speak to one another. They were culturally different. And in that way, it's very much like America. We have classes and cultural schisms and fractures and fissures, and we see it played out over and over and over and over again across all of these landscapes. The Supreme Court made some very controversial rulings this week around affirmative action, LGBTQ+, all of that stuff is going on, and if the church is not awake and aware, you will think that the Supreme Court has power. When Jesus said when he got up, all power has been given to me. So what you're seeing played out is God's will, even if it doesn't make sense to you now, it's still a part of all things working together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Somebody scream all things, including the things you don't understand, agree with, or like. Even that is working for your good. Wow. I really hope you're hearing this. I don't want to waste a word like this if you sleep. If you sleepy, lay down. But if you're hungry, come eat. Dinner is ready. Jesus was speaking to a Samaritan. In my hometown, there's a, a hospital called Good Samaritan. Anybody else ever heard of a Good Samaritan hospital? Everybody talks about the Good Samaritan. How come nobody ever talks about the Bad Samaritan? I ain't heard one sermon about the Bad Samaritan. Why y'all quiet? Here's why, because you ain't heard one either. Have you ever heard a sermon about a bad Samaritan? You know why? Because the scripture, and this is, this is, it could be offensive, but because it was being written for Hebrews, they had to say good Samaritan because they thought all of them were bad. Even in that, God was addressing the racism and classism in somebody who felt they were elite. When in fact, the blood is applied to everyone equally if they call on the name of the Lord. 17 people clap. Let me tell you something. There is no black heaven. There is no white heaven. There is no Republican heaven. There is no reformed heaven. There is no holiness heaven. There is no Baptist heaven. There is one heaven with one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I've said it many times. I'm going to say it again. And y'all get caught up. In all of these games that the media plays to keep us divided. Get in the word so you know God for yourself. But you can't get in the word if you keep binge watching Yellowstone. You old. You still watching Love and Hip Hop? And am I saying anything's wrong with watching? No, but at the expense of your development? You still not spiritually mature, but you got three hours to watch a show that doesn't edify your spirit and your marriage is falling apart? Your kids are smoking weed in the bathroom and your kids are going crazy twerking at the friend's party and you're okay? Get in the Word. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom on how to raise your children. Ask the Holy Spirit on how you can have a healthier marriage or how you can stay holy living single. The truth is most people go to church, but they're not serious about God. Yeah, they'll show up on Sunday, but I promise you this. I was listening to that Kanye song from his Jesus is King album. And it was closed on Sunday. You're my Chick-fil-A. And I like that song because I've, I really feel like if six days God worked, the seventh day he rested. Six days God worked, the seventh day he rested. In our Gregorian calendar, this would, even though it's the first day of the week technically, on the, we call it a weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So six days, Sunday would be the seventh in the way that we do things, which means... The church should be open every day. If you was going to rest, today would be your day. The problem is we don't work six days and then come here for an hour and a half, two hours, and think we've done something. God is saying, I don't need Sunday Christians. I need Christians. 
Praise break. Everybody in here, do something. Stomp a foot, throw a shoe, pull off your wig, grab an eyelash. Somebody shout. Mm, mm, mm. And so I'm setting this up for you because I'm coming back to John chapter 4. You don't hear about the bad Samaritan because they thought they were all bad. But the truth is no group of people are all bad or all good. And that's what the media wants you to think. They pit black against white all day. Everybody white is bad and racist. That's not true. That's not true any more than everybody black is good and perfect. That's not true. It's bad people in every group of people. There's good people in every group of people. So stop painting everybody with the same brush. Real quiet in here, but I know I'm talking right. We do it in church. We do it in church. We do. Yes, we do. We look at people before we shake their hand, and we've already decided. I don't want to know them. They nasty, or look at the way they dress. They have nothing to offer. They probably broke, and you sitting up judging somebody worth $17 million because you were looking at their clothes. And the wealthiest people I know wear the dingiest shoes. If you got to floss and show your money, you ain't got none. I wish somebody would run, do a cartwheel. We have been tricked into living in a divided country. And the church has played along. Ooh, God. Help me, Lord. I got to be careful what I say because, you know, people get offended when you start talking about the church and politics. But that thing is on my spirit because Jesus was not a politician. He is not a politician. He is a monarch. He is a king. And kings make decrees and angels move when he speaks. Oh, Lord, help me. And so we hear about these good, this good Samaritan, the, the parable, but here Jesus is meeting with a Samaritan woman. She's had some challenges. She's been married five times. She's living with a man. And so before anybody judged, some of y'all had a couple marriages, and you done lived with somebody too, so just be quiet. And if you didn't live with him, you slept with him and kept, kept, kept some clothes in one of them drawers till y'all broke up. And I'm coming over there. Don't be there when I come over there. I'm going to get my stuff. I'm going to leave your little nasty key on the cabinet. You don't want to say amen because then they're going to be judging you too. But while they looking, they got some stuff they don't want you to know about either. I'm so tired of church folk. Everybody in here needs the cross. Everybody in here needs the blood. And if you think you don't, this is not the church for you. God bless you. Go somewhere where everybody is perfect. This is not that place. Everyone in here is forgiven. I need a praise break. I need a praise break, Marlo. I need a praise break. I said, I need a praise break. If there's anybody in here that's been forgiven, can you give the Lord a praise for being forgiven? Jesus was teaching the disciples because they were prejudiced too. They had issues too. The same way after Jesus went back up into, the, into heaven, and the disciples were one way in front of Hebrews and another way in front of the <laughs> in front of the Gentiles. Who was it? Was it Paul? Paul fronted on them and said, Oh no, 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 no. You was acting one way around the Jews. Now you're trying to act another way around the Gentiles. Be the same way. But people are put on a different face based on who they're in front of. It's people like that in my life. They don't know, though. I, I got the, the anointing of multiple faces. I can look at you and see that you're smiling, but I know what's behind it. Anybody else got the Holy Ghost? You have discernment. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus was having a conversation with someone culturally that the people he was leading would look at as unworthy of his conversation and his time. 
I'm grateful that Jesus still has conversations with people that are not worthy of his time, like me. I don't deserve the goodness of God. I don't deserve the blood of Jesus. I don't deserve. And maybe I'm the, not the only one here who knows that in my own righteousness, I am not worthy to approach the throne, let alone even talk to God, let alone for him to talk back. But by the blood of Jesus, I have been given access to the resources of heaven, and I'm thankful, and you ought to be thankful too, that God has not turned his back because of your humanity and your sin, but because of the blood of Jesus and you falling on the name of the Lord. He calls you son. He calls you daughter. That ought to give you some modicum of a hallelujah in your spirit. What I love, Pastor DeMarcus, Pastor Robert, about this scripture is this woman who had been judged by society is shown to be a prophet. Some of the people that you've thrown away, God hadn't thrown them away. She gets, watch this, she gets to her village and says, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Which means in all them five marriages, she had been looking for Jesus. <laughs> Living with a man. Something in her was still searching for the Christ. And even though she was in a bad situation and had gone through bad things, she still was looking for Jesus. That's why you can't throw somebody away because they on drugs. That's why you can't throw somebody away because they're in the club last night. Because you don't know that even in the midst of what they're going through, they're still looking for Jesus. I wish I had some help. You ain't always shouted. You were somewhere you didn't need to be. But in your heart, you were still looking. For, was there anybody that was sinning but still searching? Oh, you can sin and search. There are people who twerk and search. There are people who drink and search. Why you think they drinking? Hoping that peace is at the bottom of the bottle. But what you find out is once the high is gone, that's when Jesus shows up. I need some help in here. Come see a man who told me everything I've ever done. Could this be who I've been looking for? I've been giving my body and my time to this and to this and to this when the whole time I just needed one conversation at a well. Woo. So then the disciples walk up and they're like, uh-oh, why is he talking to her? But they didn't question him. Didn't mean they didn't have questions. They just knew you better keep them in your mouth. You better swallow that question, Thomas, Bartholomew. And then they said, Rabbi, it's hot. You've been out here at this well. It's the heat of the day. You've been ministering nonstop. Eat. And he says, <laughs> I have food to eat which you do not know. And they were like, well, um, has anyone brought, somebody brought him a plate? I don't see no aluminum foil. Somebody brought him a plate. Somebody went down to Mary Magdalene's house, got him some, some rib tips and baked beans with pineapples in them. He not gonna eat that. Jesus don't want no pineapple in his baked beans. It shows the distance between the level of revelation Jesus was walking in and the people he was leading. He said, I have food that you're not aware of. And they were like, I didn't know somebody brought him a plate. And then he says, listen, goofballs, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Somebody say spirit led. Spirit fed. I need you to understand Jesus is my Lord because he was led by the Spirit. He fulfilled the righteous requirement of the law and the prophets to be the full payment for my sin. 
He is my sitting now. I want everybody to say this. Jesus is, Lord. Jesus is Lord. Scripture says nobody can say that without the Holy Ghost. So that's going to mess with your theology for people who think you got to speak in a tongue. Say Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Now, here's the thing. Everybody's going to say that. You can either do it willingly or you can do it unwillingly at the judgment day. But for me, I've said it early. I don't know why the Holy Ghost said this to me, but he said there will be no one in hell who doesn't know why they're there. Let's get this straight about heaven and hell. I want everybody to hear me real clear. Anyone who goes to heaven other than Jesus does not deserve it. You're only going to get to heaven because of what Jesus did. I want to, did everybody hear me? Don't you ever be walking up to it. <laughs> My works got me here. You better bow down. The only, the only way you get through them gates it's because the father sees the blood of his son and has credited to your account. Normally, you would shout right there. On the flip side, anyone who goes to hell had to work hard to get there because God has made, he has fought for souls and has made it so easy for you to go to heaven that you can get saved at six years old, live like hell, and he will still credit your confession. Now, your reward will not look good, but the, I don't care if I got an apartment as long as I get in. Y'all didn't hear me. The thief on the cross I don't know what his mansion's going to look like, but it's not going to look like my grandmother's because my grandmother served him her whole life. He got saved at the last minute. He is in heaven. My grandmother is in heaven. Their houses don't look the same because their reward is not the same, but the blood is the same. This is really good. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? Some of you are like, well, you can lose your salvation. No, you can't. You can't lose it any more than you can earn it. <laughs> Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Now, the process of sanctification looks different for everyone because the things I struggle with, you may not struggle with. And the Holy Spirit might take 45 years to get me free, and you might get free in 12 days. Good for you, but it doesn't mean that you're better than me. I'm tired of you looking at me because I'm still in my process. Just because I'm in my process doesn't mean I don't love God. Doesn't mean I'm not saved. Doesn't mean I'm not sincere. Doesn't mean that I'm not serious. I'm a Samaritan at the well waiting for Jesus to give me the revelation. I need y'all to give God a praise break because I, I just need a second. Somebody say, it's time to eat. Spirit led, spirit led. He said, I have food you know not of. What he's saying is, what sustains me is doing the will of my Father. <sighs> Jesus' beginning of ministry started with what? A 40-day fast. He just decided to go into the wilderness? What does Scripture say? I'm sorry, he was led Where? Up by the what? I like that you said he wasn't, it wasn't just that he was led by the Spirit. He was led, even though it was temptation, it was elevation. Some of y'all like, this the devil. No, that's elevation calling. The temptation that's in front of you is to see if you graduated. The temptation is the exam. 
Pastor DeMarcus, I'm, I wish somebody other than you were catching. I said the temptation is not the devil. It is an opportunity to see if the word that you've been dining on is enough to sustain you in time of testing. If you're still failing the same exam 20 years later, one of two things is happening. Either you're not applying the lesson or you got the wrong teacher. Do you know there are people who go to churches because they know that it's not good word? That way they don't have to be accountable for anything. When I first started pastoring, I'm like, oh, they left. I'm, now I'm like, they left. That's everybody's choice. Unless you're one of these wicked witchcraft preachers that tells people if you leave a church, you're going to be cursed and you're going to hell. No, that's not true. If you leave here, God is still God. And I don't want nothing bad to happen to you or your family. That's ignorant, ignorant, ignorant witchcraft stuff. And if your family go to one of them goofy churches, tell them to watch this part of this sermon. And tell they pastor to watch too, but he already watching because I know you are. Somebody say it's time to eat. Spirit led, spirit fed. Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He passed the test. It says after he passed the test, what happened? He was hungry. Here comes Satan. Of course, three times he offered them things. And Jesus responded with the word. It is written. It is written. It is written. Put it in the chat feed. It is written. Write it down in your, in your notes. It is written. If you're going to pass the test, you're going to need the word. Your opinion doesn't matter to Satan. Your, your degrees don't matter to Satan. It's some, it's some folk with PhDs that are, that are possessed of demons. Your money can't save you. There are billionaires who are going to hell. I'm here to tell you this morning, it's still morning, my God. Your bosh is still morning for another minute. <laughs> I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus has the power to sustain you by the Holy Ghost in every area that he's taking you to. Now listen to me. Your appetite will not change, but how it is filled will. Let me tell you something. You show me your appetites and I'll show you your anointing. Show me what you're hungry for and I'll show you what you called to. Dad, gone. This is one of them conference words. This is one of them woman now are loose words. That's when they would all shout. But did, your anointing and your appetite are correlated. And if you have strong appetites, you can be sure that God has an elevated position of authority for you. But because he's not going to give you tests that are not actually going to be used in the real world. So once you pass the test, you get the badge, you're able to rightly divide the word of truth. And you know how to put devils under your feet and cast them out of the house and cast them out of your marriage and cast them off your kid's school. You will understand. And we're getting ready to get into it in a few weeks. The, 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 the next, not the next, we got two sermon series. We got one for August, but after that, we got one called How Demons Operate. This place going to be packed, and we casting out everything that's not God. But you need to know that just like the military, there are lower-ranking demons, mid-ranking demons, high-ranking demons. There are generals. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Daniel fasted for 21 days. He had the general over Persia like, no, nah, I can't let him get breakthrough till God sent his man, Michael. Michael came in and cleared all of that out. You don't want to see Michael coming. Bible says, <laughs> Sennacherib was talking smack. To the king and the king prayed and 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 God said don't worry about what he's talking about I'm getting ready to turn him back put a hook in his nose he's leaving in one night 190,000 soldiers dead 
one angel. One angel in one night. <laughs> These people better leave you alone. Because somebody getting ready to get that Sennacherib. Listen to me. Uh-oh. Some of y'all are getting ready to be set free from people that have been pursuing you. And it's going to happen overnight. And you won't even know what happened. God's just going to do it. You'll never know, but I need you to know that God's getting ready to break the back of your enemy. I wish I had somebody who had faith to receive it. And if your enemy is a spirit and not a person, he's going to break that spirit and the bondage connected to it so you can finally be free for once in your life. So somebody, it's time to eat. Spirit led, spirit fed. So here's, here is the equation that I want you to get. Write this down. This is good. I saw everybody lean down. James, you got to get this. If you're spirit led and spirit fed, that means that your appetite will be sated, S-A-T-E-D, sated or satiate to be, if, if, I, if I have been sated, that means my, 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 my appetite has been filled. You don't have to necessarily use the word sated, but it is the correct term. But, but my point, James, is this. If, if I do the will of the Father, I will not have need for sustenance outside of his presence. What do I mean? Let me keep going. Spirit-led, spirit-fed. My hunger will be satisfied by the Holy Spirit, not by carnal means. And all of us have tried to fulfill our appetites with carnal things. Has it worked? Has it ever worked? It'll offer you a temporary relief, but with that relief comes guilt. Let's be honest. Shame. If you've, ever, if you've ever been intimate with someone who you were not married to and you have a God conscious, you feel guilty. So even if you had pleasure, as soon as that moment is over, like, dang, gone. How did I end up here again? Nobody wants to be honest. Will anybody please be honest so somebody can get free? It felt good in that moment, but then comes the guilt, and comes the shame, then comes Sunday, then you're at the altar, and you're crying, and then there's some oil, and then you say, I'm never going back, and then six days later, because the enemy thrives on cycles, just like your digestive system, you eat the nutrients, you release. You eat again. Nutrients to allow release. The same thing with spirits. They offer you what you think you're hungering for. You dine on it. It satisfies temporarily. And then now you left with all of the crap. But Jesus said, no, I, I, I have food you know not of. My food is to do the will of the Father and finish the work. Tell somebody, finish. Your hunger is not leaving until you do what you were created to do. I, I wish I was talking to somebody. I'm looking for the person who I'm speaking to. Your appetite is not going to go away until you finish the work. And God has allowed you to search everything else for it to come up empty so that you could come to him so that he could fill you because nobody else could fill you and nothing else could fill you and you've tried everything else. Seven people applaud. Let me hurry in. Jesus was dining on something people couldn't see. I asked the Lord, why am I here? This morning I asked him just straight up. Why am I in Greenville? Why am I here? Because the level of demonic warfare over this region is crazy. Nope. But if you didn't live here, you wouldn't know it. Because it looks nice. You got a little, little park downtown, river, got you a bridge. Y'all fancy. Got your little market on Saturday. They shut Main Street down. It's so nice. 
till you pull that first layer back. And it's a religious demon over this city, over this region. It's more churches in this city than anywhere else. And it's still just as racist, just as prejudiced, just as mean, just as... So all them churches and we still can't speak to one another? All these churches and we still can't see revival. Because just because it's a building with the name church don't mean Jesus was ever invited. Watch this. I said, why am I here? He said, because I led you here. I need everybody to hear this. Thank you. And that blesses me. I appreciate that. Because sometimes I've been like, God, I think I missed it. I was doing fine. I was not bothering nobody. He said, I'm leading you up into a challenging place. And there have been countless times, Av, you're probably going to shout so you and Carla get your shoes off. I'm just saying. You probably, oh, they already off? Okay, good. You got your good. You got your crotch. You might need a, a tr I need. I haven't even had a chance to tell you this yet. But with every attack and every place of everything that we've gone through, it never occurred to me that each one of them should have killed us. We should have nothing. We're not even supposed to be here. There were people trying... We're not supposed to be here. We're not supposed to have nothing. But he sustained and sustained and sustained and sustained. And I'm not the only one that he breathed on your finances, made your money stretch. And when other people were throwing you away, somebody would show up at the right moment or at the last moment. Who am I talking to? This message is almost over, but I'm here to tell you it never occurred to me that God was actually taking us through each one of these things and they hurt, they hurt, they hurt, they hurt. But I'm not dead. I'm stronger. I got more wisdom, more discernment, more humility. I'm more sanctified now than I was when I got here because I still had a whole lot of flesh issues and I wasn't gonna let them go. But then when God keep whooping your behind, you either turn or die. So now, after five years, ooh, after a grace period, I find myself with a different strength, a different fortitude. When everyone else left, I didn't call them. You did. I called you. And so here I am being sustained in a wilderness just like my Savior. And some of you have been sustained in the wilderness. But I'm here to tell you the manna is about to cease. Pastor DeMarcus, don't start crying. I can't look at you like that right now. Some of y'all don't know what I just said. The manna was given to the children of Israel while they were in the wilderness. When they stepped into Canaan, when they got into their promise, the manna stopped. Because in your promise, you don't need a miracle, you need a plan. The man is about to cease. God says, stop asking for miracles. You are not going to need a miracle in this next season. You're going to need stewardship in this next. Ooh. I don't know that anybody caught it. Spirit led. Spirit. Somebody say spirit led. Spirit, -led. spirit fed. My appetite is now aligned with the will of the father. And the only time I'm satisfied is when he's satisfied. I want somebody to say this. I won't be satisfied 
until the Holy Ghost is satisfied. That's being spirit-led and spirit-fed. Jesus said, I got food you don't know about. I, I literally find substance and sustenance in doing the will of the Father. I'm not hungry for food. I'm hungry to do his will. Jesus was talking to a woman that society says he shouldn't talk to, that he was above her, that her entire people group was unworthy. And Jesus goes right to her at the well, introduces himself, makes himself available, and she gets free. She gets saved, and every, many people in her village got saved. So she went from a broken woman, five times divorced, living with a man, to a prophet and an evangelist in one conversation. That's being spirit-led and spirit-fed. Let me tell you what happens when you're spirit-led and spirit-fed. What takes years will take days. I want to talk to some people that want to be led by the Spirit. I said, I want to talk to somebody. There it is. There's a release on that seed. Whatever you're sowing, there's a release for your family on that seed. Let me tell you something. God is getting ready to put you in positions where no human being can sustain you. No meal will satisfy you. No accolade will satisfy you. All you want to hear is well done. And the truth is, Q, that's all God wanted was to get you graduating from the opinions of people. I need, I need, I, well, I wish they would like me. I wish they would. Just what my wife said. Why? Why do you care? I'm not here to impress you. I'm not here to please you. I am here to do the will of the Father. Let me tell you something. There are times when God will ask me to say something, and I'm like, God, that's not popular. He was like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> if you're a prophet and you're more concerned with the applause of people than the approval of God, you're not a prophet. You're a profiteer. Because there are people who will prophesy what you want if you give them $50 in the $100 line. Yeah, I'm saying it. There are people who bastardize the gift so they can make money. Then there are people like my great-grandmother who had a gift of healing so profound that there was a line wrapped around her house 24 hours a day. And then she asked the Lord to take that gift from her. I don't know if it was 24 hours a day, but it was a line all the time to the point that she couldn't, she was too weary. She said, God, take the gift. Take it away. And I said, she's different than a lot of these people today. Because if somebody had that gift today, they'd open up an arena and they would make you pay for what they got for free. Somebody say spirit led, spirit fed. There's a release on that seed, woman of God. There's a re Did you hear what I said? I said there's a release on the seed that you just, there's a release. College paid for. How old is your son? Is that a boy? That's your nephew? Hey, man, what's your name? Jesse with a pacifier. I like that name, Jesse. Jesse had a son named David. Jesse, you're going to be mighty in the land. Your sons will be mighty in the land. I wish I had some help in here. Spirit-led, spirit-fed. I got something to say. I think you're going to like it. Linton, I think you're going to like this. When you're led by the Spirit, he's not going to put you in front of the crowd. I'm going to say it again. When you're led by the Spirit, your development is in silence. He's not going to give you the mic. You're not going to get the platform, and you're hungry for ambition, and that's why you don't have it yet. God's got to burn out your ambition. There's a release on that seed, woman of God. There is a release on that seed. I feel the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. God will lead you in obscure places to make sure that you have what you need in your soul to sustain you in your calling. I'm fighting something in the atmosphere. I could use some intercessors. Jesus Christ. Anybody else feel what I'm feeling? 
That's what warfare feels like. I was sitting upstairs, and the Lord was like, why do you keep worrying about time? This is upstairs before this service, because I was like, we're going to get out of here before noon. He said, why? And I said, because people. He said, did you ask me? You more concerned with them than me moving? If they got to go, they're going to go anyway. Do what I said. So I'm sorry, but I got something else I got to say. Can I talk like I feel it? There is in this season a need for a move of the Holy Ghost. We've had religion and religion has had its day. But for those of us who he has been pruning and developing in silent places and in wilderness places where there are no cameras and there is no crowd, we don't even hear about Jesus for 18 years. We don't see his development. We don't see his training. We just see him show up. The Holy Ghost shows up when he gets in the water. I don't know what happened for 18 years and neither do you, but whatever it was, there's a release on that seed. There's a release on that seed. Hallelujah. Whatever it was, was enough for him to be used by the Father to save the whole world. So stop getting upset because no one knows your name yet. They didn't know his either. Oh, God's about to introduce the world to some sudden prophets. But it's not sudden to you. You've been that the whole time. But God's about to introduce you. Come on, Elijah. Elijah shows up and says, Ahab, won't be no rain till I say so. He hadn't even been introduced. We don't know anything about him. We don't know what one thing. God is getting ready to introduce you his way. Stop trying to introduce yourself. Stop trying to open the door yourself. God is going to kick the door in for you. There's a release on that seed, man of God. There's a release on that seed. Hallelujah. Online, I'm saying this to you as I bring this sermon to a close. Stop searching for validation from people. God develops leaders in silence. He develops them in solitude. Jesus could have gone to the village where the woman lived and done a sermon, but he wasn't trying to start a new synagogue there. He wanted to unlock her because she had the oil for the region. Oh my God. My job is not to impress you with my biblical knowledge, it's to unlock you so you can walk in power at your house. There's a release on that seed. There's a release, Jordan. Hear me, Jordan, you just crossed over. The Jordan is a symbol of crossing over. You've just crossed over. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Somebody better move, man of God, as you walk. I see freedom and I see riches. Something is happening in the service. As I close, you need to thank God that he kept you hidden and he sustained you when nobody else would have given you anything. God kept you. God sustained you. That is being spirit-led and spirit-fed. And Jesus himself was spirit-led and spirit-fed. Jesus will satisfy the hunger. There is a release on your seed. There's a release on that seed. MJ, get some from your mama. Sow it in here. It's for your sons and your daughters. Oh, God. Get something in your hands for Tyler and Eric. I don't care what it is. It's a seed for their sons and their daughters. They done put the red out of time thing up there for me. Like I'm going to listen. I will respect my control room. But I'm going to respect the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Listen, something's shifting. Do y'all feel it? No, 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 no. There's a release, China, for the boys. 
on that seed. Amber, what you do now, you do for Kenzo's children. Y'all missed that. What you do now, you do for your children and your children's children. Thank you, Jesus. If you're online, you're saying, I can't get to the altar. If you want to do it electronically, if the Lord leads you, then do it. There is no compulsion. Somebody say spirit-led, spirit-fed. Spirit spirit fed. I only want to be where the Holy Ghost wants me to be. We're going to have to talk about Atlanta. Because I know the Lord said Atlanta. He told me that before I got married. Then gave me a name when I got married. I had all of that. I had all of this. Went down there, then got a blood clot this week. Y'all do, y'all gonna have to forgive me because I, I should be dead a year now. I should be dead a year this week. This should be my one year anniversary. July 7th was supposed to be my end. But yet here I am in better shape than I was a year ago in the place that the devil didn't want me to be in, in the city that the devil don't want me in. And I'm telling you that I'm spirit-led and spirit-fed. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Tell somebody, I'm going to be obedient. Look at them, I'm going to be obedient. Tell them, I'm going to go where the Lord tells me. Everyone is standing. Here's the question I want you to ask yourself this week. This is going to be your homework. Every relationship, every interaction, do you leave hungry or filled? Elder Carla, they missed it. I'm going to say it again. Delroy, every, for everybody this week, every relationship, every interaction, do you leave Hungry or filled? Because if you leave hungry, I want you to mark that individual. If they drain the fool out of you. That's not God's will for your life in this season. God wants you to have relationships that nourish you as you nourish them. No more upside down relationships, except for my kids. My kids cannot give me back, but they're not supposed to. I understand that dynamic. But if I'm in a relationship with a leader, and every time I talk to you, you sitting in depression? Every time I talk to you, it's another drama, some more trials? I'm going to have to rethink my proximity to you. Yesterday after the funeral, I went and spent some time with some of my family. I got to see my Aunt Sherry, who came in here in a walker. When I saw her yesterday, she said, do you notice anything different? She said she went somewhere and they took her walker. And she's walking. Now, y'all don't understand because... She had been on that walk. I need you to understand that God is doing miracles. It starts here. But you're not going to catch it till you get home. Because God wants the miracle at your house, not in this room. I'm going to know we hit revival when you at your house and can't stop shouting. Revival is not shouting here till 1230. Revival is when you can't stop praising him at your house. When your children say, hey, Ma, what's that one song, that, that gospel song you play? Can you play it real? Uh-oh. When your kids are the initiators of revival, that's when you know. Spirit-led. Spirit fed. 
I want what the Holy Spirit is cooking, which means I need to be where the Holy Spirit wants me to be. I'm in the city that God assigned for me to be in. It doesn't mean that it's easy, but he don't give, he don't give easy work to his frontline soldiers. Where are the frontline soldiers at? Hallelujah. I'm committed to this work. I'm committed to what God wants to do. Hands lifted. Father, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. My prayer, in a time of great division and brokenness, is that the power of your Spirit would manifest in strange, mighty, and unusual ways. Holy Ghost, hit us like a, a meteor and lay waste to anything that does not bring you glory. Fill us with power and the Holy Ghost. And I thank you today for the saints of God on a 4th of July weekend, pack in your house to give you glory. Now, I thank you for our Rock family, so gracious and loving. And I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost that you would protect everybody's family here. Keep us safe. Lord, don't let nobody blow their fingertips off trying to light no daggone firework. And Lord, deliver us from anyone who would put pineapples in baked beans. <laughs> you should see her husband. He's, yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I mean, no, Lord. No. I got to go home with it, Jesus. Get the glory. Now, what's about to happen now, Lord, is you're about to hear a sound from Relentless that lets you know we're going to stay spirit led and spirit fed including having uncomfortable conversations with people from different parts of society like Jesus did. We're not going to judge people. We're going to be conduits for unity and reconciliation in Jesus' name. Lord, when I say amen, we're going to shout like we lost our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. There's about 15 people in here that need to make a move to the altar. The Lord has called you to be a part of this church or you know that you're not saved or you're not sure about your salvation. Meet me at the front of this altar right now. I'm joining Relentless. If that's you online, text member to 95555. If you're in the building and you want to be a part of this house, meet me at this altar right now, right now, right now. Don't wait. And I believe if you clap, they will come. not the only one. Here they come. Here he comes. Did you bring the potato chips? Babe, this who had the potato chips, she joined. Hey, baby. Look at that. Sour cream and onion and salvation.
Let's scoot him back down just a little bit. Welcome home, man of God. Welcome home. Anybody else? All right, so next Sunday, it'll be a year, right? It'll be a year that I was in the hospital. Do you think I'm not going to act a fool next Sunday in here? They don't need to lift this because I'm going to tear this out of its frame. I need 500 men to join me next week because we're going to run around this altar. We're going to run around this church. I'm going to act a fool. I just need 500 people that are crazy that will run with me. Just one lap. All I need is one lap, especially since I was supposed to be dead anyway. And I'm 50. He about to get one whole, just one lap, though. Just one. Welcome home. Welcome home. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Your family out here is going to pray it with you. Online, if you're joining, pray this as well. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, but the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough to pay for all my sins. Now, Holy Spirit, come live inside and teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. You are my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Can somebody give the Lord a great praise? Listen, to our new family, I want you to turn this way. We're walking together. Walk with me. Walk with me. We're walking this way. We're following Elder James in his premium outfit. You sharp today, Doc. You sharp today. Now, other weeks, not so much. But this week, <laughs> let's celebrate and welcome them home. Hallelujah. Pastor Ab, Hallelujah. you have something you want to share? Yes, I do. Have you been blessed today? I know Pastor John alluded to this. However, we're going to take this moment to pray for Pastor John. Um, on Thursday, this time last year, is when the saddle PE was supposed to take him immediately. And so in this... I'm sorry, saddle pulmonary embolism um, was to um, kill him. So we're going to have Pastor Lamores, Pastor Demarcus, Pastor Robert to come. Um, we're going to pray for our pastor because we don't want the enemy to think by chance that we're going to forget this miracle. So we're going to pray. We're going to cover. My faith increased. My relationship with God increased. As I was sitting there looking at my husband in CCU, looking at me this way, moving his head, because they were like, no sudden moves. There's nothing we'll be able to do if the one in your leg meets the one in your chest. And I am beyond grateful to see this jubilee moment and what it means because the enemy was hoping that he would be able to hijack him before he made it here before we made it here so we're going to take a moment and we're going to say a prayer for pastor john and his continued health pastor charles where are you if you're close and he usually uh is securing this perimeter we thank god for uh, our executive pastor, Pastor Charles, he'll be praying wherever he is. But right now in this moment, we're going to go to God in prayer for Pastor John before we let go today. Because we know on next Sunday is the Sunday that the elders and Pastor Lamar, everybody had to cover because we were in the hospital. <laughs> One year later, the devil lost. And we're going to pray right here, right here, right here. Heavenly Father, um, 
this is our pastor. Uh, this is my brother and my friend. And last year, he came to Greenville, then came to Atlanta, then went to go visit family, and he ended up in the hospital. But not this year. Amen. Not this time. We lift up John and Avon to pray and their children that the warfare that we've been facing this morning was an attempt to disrail what had been done today. But no crop failure shall happen this time. You have already sent a healing from on high. This time, God, we are girding him, keeping him, praying for him, lifting up his head, his heart, his mind, his spirit. Everything that he's poured out to us in this temple, God, restore back unto him and his family. Let him know that the labor that he's experiencing, God, it is not a labor that is not going to be answered, God. This labor is not in vain. You have already gone ahead and fixed what he's done today, but God, keep his heart, keep his mind steady, keep him free from all her harm and danger, keep him free from any attack of the enemy, keep him free from anything that would cause him to believe that you are not fully with him. Don't attack his mind, enemy. Let him know that he is worthy. Let him know that you have already gone ahead and spoken a word over him, that he shall finish the next 50 years running faster than he did the first 50 years. He will complete this race with power. He will complete this race expediently, God. God. We don't have time right now. There are souls depending upon him. There are souls with his name on him, God. Let him know that you have already gone ahead and fixed it. And any attack of the enemy that shall come, the same way we are covering him right now, let the enemy know that we have his back. We have his side. You have his front, God. Yeah. You have already given angels charge over him that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. God, have your way in his life. Protect his wife. Everything that she's poured out, every prayer that she's prayed, everything that she's done to keep him lifted, God. God, restore her, repay her, replenish her, yeah. renew her, yeah. refresh her, yeah. protect their children, God, as they have worried about their dad. Let them know that he is in their hands and they are in his hands. And so whatever they were concerned about, God, you have perfected that which we are concerned about. So from this day forward, God, we know that you are not only protecting John Gray and Aventure Gray and Four and Theory, but everything that is connected to Relentless Church, God, have your way perfected. Make it right in your sight. Burn down those iniquities. Burn down those things that would try to come against you, God. Create a hedge of protection around them so that what was trying to take his heart out last year has no way to get in it this year. We have sealed these things. The Holy Spirit is with him. The Holy Spirit is on him. And because he was there last year, we have all seen not only the weight loss, but we have seen the growth in the spirit. There are things that he's maturing in. There are things that he's developing in. And because of that, God, today is a day that he has been established and declared a new independence but a dependence on you a dependence on you intercessors war in the spirit you cannot have him or his family, or his mind. And it shall be done. And it shall be completed. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I love y'all. Y'all didn't even have to stay for that. I'm grateful that you did. Thank you for staying. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of my life my wife and our children. And um, my prayer is that you have an amazing 4th of July. Do me a favor. It would bless me if you would speak life and blessings over five people before you go. Just tell them, God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your health. Speak life. You can do it while I'm giving the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord God be gracious to you, show you his favor give you his peace. God bless you, Relentless Church. This Wednesday, Pastor DeMarcus is going to be teaching on finance, and then we have a breakout with Malik Davis, and we're going to help our church to be debt-free. 
we're going to talk about credit. Everybody say 850. That's the highest credit score. I'm bringing the best in the business to teach us, and I'm going to help some people who are serious to get your credit where it needs to be. You got to be here this Wednesday. It's changing everything. We love you. Happy Fourth of July.